Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and today we are putting a 3 inch lift and 31 inch tires on old blackjack here, so stay tuned. So before we get this thing inside, we're going to take a quick measurement to the top of the wheel well openings, front and rear, and see how far a 3 inch lift and 31 inch tires is going to lift it over the stock setup. Let's take a look. So as it sits right there, we're pretty well at uh, 29 inches on the rear and about 28 inches on the front. So let's get this thing inside up on the hoist, get the wheels off of it, and we'll show you what we've got to do to make it work. But first, let's go take a look at those new wheels and tire setup. So here is our wheel and tire setup that we're going with on this car. So these are 31 inch tall and they're actually 265, 70, 16 on these 16 inch black wheels. The same ones that we put on grandma last year. Now these are the Hercules Terra Track tires and uh, they've got a pretty good looking tread on them. And I'm hoping that they'll do all right this winter on that car. And uh, we've got all four of them all mounted and balanced and ready to roll. But like I said, first things first, we've got to get the car in the shop, get it up in the air get the current wheels and tires pulled off of it and show you what we've got to do to make this lift happen. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our lift a brand three inch lift kit that fits these cars. And yes, they specifically make a lift kit to fit these Panther platforms. And the biggest reason why is because people donk these cars and put great big 24 inch aluminum wheels all jacked up and all that stuff. That's not the look we're going for. We are looking to get her jacked up but it's so we can fit those big 31 inch tires on it. So what this kit includes is it includes all the hardware as well as your shock extensions. I'll get to that in just a second. But we've got our strut spacer, almost like a leveling kit on a regular truck where you just mount this in place above the strut and then it mounts back up into place. And then in the back, we've got these three inch lifts that are going to lift the coil springs up off the axle. So we're gonna put these in place and get that rear axle done. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. But we're gonna to have to replace the rear shocks because the shocks that are on it that are stock aren't gonna have the travel needed to accommodate this lift. So what the recommendation is, is to go with an F-150 strut or shock off of the same year vehicle. So basically this is off of an 03 uh, F-150 and uh, this is going to be give us the travel that we need on the back of that car with that extra lift in it. So let's go out back and uh, we'll take a look. So as you can see the coil spring is right there. We're going to continue to use that one at some point. We may be swapping the differential and we'll change it at some point. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this and this is going to sit on top of this perch and then the spring is going to sit on top of that. So what that means is that we're going to have to loosen up uh, this four link and let that drop will release the uh, shocks here so that the axle will hang down even further and Then we'll just kind of pry these up into place I don't think it's gonna be that big of a job and then when we're done We'll end up replacing these shocks the same as we did on grandma We'll likely end up having to cut them off at the top because that looks quite rusty and then we'll replace them with those f-150 uh, shocks back here now, if you guys recall back to this video. Okay, so we've got Grandma in here up on the hoist, the and I can't help it, but every time Grandma gets up on a hoist and I lift it just so the wheels are barely off the ground, I, I don't know, I can't help but think I want one of these things with a three inch lift and great big tires on I did indeed say that I would one day love to lift one of these cars. That was long before I ever thought of buying this car, but here we are doing it on another Panther platform. So on the front, it's a little bit different story as far as the lift goes. Basically what we've got to do is we've got to remove the strut assembly out of place. So if you go up into the inner fender, I can't see it from here, but there should be three bolts on the top. And then we've got the one bolt down here on the bottom. We're going to have to move some of this stuff out of the way, probably the uh, upper control arm to get that strut out of, out of the way. And then we're gonna bolt this to the top of the strut and then bolt this up into that strut perch. 
Once that's in there, that pushes everything down and that gives us the lift we need up front to accommodate those tires. So what do you say? We get to work. All right, so let's give you an update on where we are so far on the passenger side. This is where we started because I feel like the front is gonna be a little bit more work than the back with those coil springs. So let's take a quick peek. So basically what I did was I took the bottom bolt out of the strut here. I loosened up the control arm here and over here, and then I had to remove the upper ball joint. So I swung the ball joint out of the way. I'm getting ready to get these three 13 millimeter bolts off the top of the strut. The strut should fall down. And when it does, I should be able to just kind of weasel it out from under here. So let's get those three bolts undone and get that strut out and then we can put the spacer on and start reassembly. All right, so we've got our strut out with a little bit of struggle and thankfully Tim showed up uh, just in time to scare the crap out of me and uh, help with the pry bar, get this thing on. So this plate is what's gonna sit down on top of these threads and we're gonna take the hardware kit with the nuts that will zing that down into place and then we've got new ones that will go up into place that take the nuts that we took off these ones. And then we'll just reverse the process, likely with a little bit of struggle as well, but nevertheless, we know we need the big pry bar and possibly an extra set of hands. So anyways, we'll get this mounted on and start the process in reverse. All right, so we got our kit here and uh, it took us a few minutes to figure out how it was supposed to go on there. Those bolts only line up on those holes one way. And we know that it's got to face a certain way because they're narrower on one end on the mount than they are um, if we spun it around 180 degrees. So we know it only fits in there one way. When we put the bracket down onto the studs, the studs were too long for these bolts to go up through the same hole. So what we did was we put them on there, we cut them, and then we found another problem that, well, these aren't gonna hold themselves up while we stick the strut back up in the hole. And we know how much of a challenge that's gonna be. So I took some old rubber hose here, cut it to fit, wedged it in there so that these are kind of in place enough to get it back up inside the strut mount. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And Tim's still here, he's gonna give me a hand. And we've gotta kind of manhandle that thing back up into the perch there and get everything put back together. Okay guys, it is day two, and as you can see behind me, we've got one wheel and tire combo mounted on the car. We're just checking clearances. And uh, it does the full sweep without hitting anything except for this black plastic inner fender. So we will have to take that back off and get her trimmed up. Today we're gonna to be working on the other side, and I've got Junior here to give me a hand with some prying and some uh, extra set of hands, and the back I think I can handle by myself. So let's go over to the other side, we'll move all of our tools over there and we'll get started tearing that apart. So basically over here guys, it's the exact same thing that we did on the passenger side, just on the driver's side. We've got to take the upper control arm off, we're going to pull that pin, that bolt out from the strut and unattach uh, the three bolts from up top and get some prying action, pull that out and we should be good to go. I'm not going to bore you with all that because you saw me do it on the other side, so we're going to tackle this and then we'll jump to the rear and hopefully finish this up before lunchtime. Right now it's about uh, 10 to 10, so that's our goal for today. Okay, so we've got the driver's side done and we're getting ready to head back to the rear, but before we did that, I wanted to show you guys just where this thing sits on its own weight presently. Let's take a look. That's the front. You'll notice the hoist is all the way down to the floor, so this is the front and I would say there's at least five inches between the tire and the top of the fender. Now granted once for the rear end comes up then that'll come down a little bit. But man, that thing is going to be a beast. Well, look at that compared to the back. Well, I told my dad what I was doing with this car when he saw the big tires going on it. He said, my son is a redneck and I said, yup. I said, my, your son might be a redneck. I said, but your son is a smart redneck in the fact that this car 
is going to get me some views on YouTube. If you like what you see so far, guys, don't hesitate on clicking that subscribe button. As you all know, I'm on the road to 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I think we're going to do it. But as a bonus, when we get there, I'm going to release the video of me blowing up a couple of vehicles with some friends and some shenanigans we had that weekend before we did it. So 5,000 subs, if you can get me there real quick, the sooner you guys will get to see that video. So let's get this thing back up in the air and start working on the rear. All right, so we're at the back here and we first thing we gotta do is we've gotta get these shocks off because those shocks are gonna allow that axle assembly to kind of lower down a little bit more. Also, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up uh, these pivot points in the four link to help give us a little bit more travel. Seeing as how we've got these new Ford F-150 shocks to replace these ones. And then again, the reason why we're doing that is simply because we need more travel. If we're pushing this down three inches, these Grand Marquis shocks weren't made to travel three extra inches than what they already are. The F-150 shocks are. So that's what we're gonna replace it with. And the way we're gonna get this off here is we're gonna end up cutting off the nut because it's rusted on both sides. And then we'll take this one off here on the bottom. Okay, so we're at the point where we've got everything loosened up and things removed that needed to be removed, and yet we're still struggling with a one-man show. We do have the coil springs out on both sides. We've got the shocks removed, and we've got all the pivot points in the four-link um, loosened up so that we can get this thing kind of pried down. The problem I'm having is that with two hands, I can't pry down on the bar and manhandle this coil spring with this adapter up into place uh, by myself. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to recruit some help uh, to get somebody in here to give me a hand. And in the meantime, I'm gonna try a uh, spring compressor, which we do have the old manual ones with the two locks on either side that you just kinda take an impact gun and jam them together. That might do the trick, but then it poses the uh, problem of not being able to get it out <laughs> once it's in there. But Nevertheless, we're going to keep on plugging and chugging, as Send It Steve would say, and see if we can come up with a solution to this. Okay, so with a little bit of finagling with this archaic coil spring compressor, after two or three tries of getting it positioned the right way so it wasn't interfering with the frame, or the exhaust, or the watts link over here, we've got this thing in place and we're ready just to release the tension on those uh, spring compressors and then we can tackle the other side. But before we do that, I'm gonna take a break, grab a drink, and uh, catch my breath. That was a little bit of a fight. So uh, anyways, we're gonna disassemble the spring compressor, repeat the process on the other side, and then get ready to put everything back together and this thing down on the ground and finally reap the reward of a three inch lift on a Grand Marquis, so break time. All right, so this second coil spring went in a lot easier now that I knew what I was doing. So we've got that in place and we're getting ready to mount the shocks. So as you can tell, these Ford F-150 shocks have a lot longer travel. That's at full extension. I've got them just finger tight up here at the top. But down here at the bottom, you'll notice one thing is it's not wide enough to fit in the stock bracket. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take this bushing and this uh, piece of steel that's attached to it, whatever it's called, out of the stock shock and cut the ends off. So you're gonna cut off right at the bushing there and here and use those as spacers when mounting the new one. So we're gonna get these cut off and then we can install that shock. We'll do the same to the other side. So let's get to it. There, we got one side down. We'll go over the other side, do the same thing. And then we can button up with this rear end. Okay, so we've got the shocks all mounted up. We gotta go up top and tighten them up there. And the last thing that we're gonna do down here underneath this vehicle is we are going to be removing this tiny puny little sway bar simply because in order for it to work properly i'd have to have sway bar links 
that were at least three inches longer to make it work and I don't. So for now we're just gonna take it off so it's not flopping around and I can't seem to do that with one hand. Why they're struggling. So anyways, trust me, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take it off and we'll get those back uh, wheels and tires on and see if we have to clear anything. But other than that, I think we're gonna be good to go back here. So uh, let's get that sway bar off. We'll get the wheels and tires on the back. See if there's anything we gotta trim. So one thing I noticed automatically, and that's before I even get the wheel kind of on, is I had to wedge it in place. It is rubbing. Keep in mind though that the suspension is at full travel all the way down, which means if I was to jump this or go over a big heave, it could come down and rip this off. So what we're going to have to do is come in and uh, take some of this plastic off and maybe even trim off some of the uh, metal here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of lug nuts on here so we'll set it down on its weight and uh, see exactly how much we'll have to trim off. So under its own weight I can kind of stick my hand in there there is some uh, clearance uh, but I'd be afraid that over some frost heaves or whatever this winter uh, we may be tearing some of this stuff apart uh, or possibly um, you know chewing up that tire prematurely. Anyways we're gonna go back up in here get the wheel off and we'll trim out some of this uh, plastic here and uh, we'll do the same on the other side. Try one more time. And now the rest of this, I'm just gonna take a hammer to it and just kind of beat it back into submission here. All right, so we'll grab our tire and we'll put it back up there again, and see where we're at. So right there, I can still see daylight through there. I'm happy with that. We're gonna go over to the other side and do the exact same thing. We'll test fit that wheel, and then we can finish up in the back and start trimming up front. Okay guys, we're out behind the shop here in the grassy area where we normally take some pretty dramatic uh, video. Uh, in a second, we're gonna reveal to you Blackjack with its three inch lift and 31 inch tires. Before we do that, I want to thank Lifter Brand and the team up there for giving me a little bit of a deal on uh, this lift. I told them I was a YouTuber and uh, that, you know, I kind of featured some of these Grand Marquis and Panther platforms and he said that he would give me some uh, free shipping, which normally would have been $60 to Canada. And uh, so thank you guys for that. And uh, I also want to, uh, thank all you guys because you guys are the ones that have been telling me that you wanted to see more panther content and well here we are so we've got two of them now one of them we just did a pretty dramatic changeover on it it took a lot of in and out of the garage driving around the parking lot trying to find all the rubs and we still have one slight one left that i've got to uh, address here before i go home but nevertheless guys this is my 2003 mercury grand marquis that we call Black Jack. Let's take a look.
And there you go, guys. There's my new pride and joy, my new daily driver, and the new content for this channel. So I hope that if you haven't yet done so, you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we got lots more where this came from. And again, if you get me to 5,000 subscribers, we've got a very special couple of videos that we're going to share your way. We're almost there, and thank you for your help, and thank you for sharing out the word of Old Car Guy. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. So if you remember back at the beginning of this video, we did a measurement to find out what the measurement was on the front and rear. We found out that the front was 28 inches to the bottom of the fender opening, and it was 29 inches back here. Let's take a look and see where we are. Up front, we are at uh, 32 and a half, so that gives us about a four and a half inch lift in the front. And out back here, we are at almost bang on at 34. So on the back we gained five inches, in the front we gained about four and a half, and that's all in part to a three inch lift and these 31 inch tires. They are a lot taller than what the uh, 18 inch low profile tires that were on at the 235, 50, 18. So I don't know about you guys, but I am 100% okay with the look of this car.